Welcome to Jesus with Josie. Thank you for clicking on. This is my first video on this channel. We're going to be talking about all things Jesus, supernatural encounters with him, miracles, things that he's done in my life, other people's lives, and just things that he's speaking to me, visions he's given me, dreams. Um, so, so today we're going to be talking about my first encounter with him. So I just wanted to share with you at this point in my life, I was the most hopeless, desperate, um, depressed, full of anxiety. I had recently experienced sexual harassment, sexual assault at my, my new job. And I was walking through that and it also just um, reactivated and pulled up some memories of my childhood of experiencing that. And, um, I was also a very heavy drinker and I had been drinking heavily for over a decade and drinking and partying. That was just my scene. It was what I've been doing for over a decade. So whether it was a good time or a bad time or a celebration or a time of mourning, whatever the time was, I just, I used alcohol and that was just my way of living and my way of coping and my way of everything at that point in life. And also, I was just very confused sexually, um, just confused about my identity, um, my relationships with men and women just came and went, and I just experienced a lot of rejection, a lot of hurt and brokenness there with relationships. And while I had accomplished a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish in life, you know, I had multiple degrees, and um, I loved playing sports, I was always successful at that, and um, just the things that I wanted to do, you know, I had the trophies to show for it. I had the piece of paper to show for it. And when it came to accomplishing, you know, that was something I was pretty good at. But as far as just being fulfilled on the inside and relationally and just having real sustainable joy, I just couldn't seem to grasp it. I couldn't find it. And also a couple of years prior to this, I had just really renounced God. I didn't want God in my life. I remember walking in my backyard and telling him, get out of my life. I don't want you in my life. I don't want you to interfere. Like, I don't even want you to look at my life. And also, I just hated his people. I didn't want to be around his people. I didn't want to be around churches and church people and religious people. And I just didn't want anything to do with it. Um, I just felt bad around them. I felt condemned. I felt guilt. And so I just, I didn't want to be around it. So I was in a very broken state at this point, and I was just trying to drink my sorrows away. I had even told a friend that I wanted to be put into a mental institution. Like, that's how mentally depressed I was and how much anxiety I had at that point in life. And I just felt like everything in my life was spinning out of control. And on this particular night, I went out, I drank, drank way too much, got blacked out drunk. And I ended up getting a DUI. So that's why I was in jail. And for hours that night, I was praying and begging God to just let me die. I didn't want to live anymore. I just saw no point in my life. I had nothing to live for. Um, I didn't want to face the shame of losing a career, the shame and guilt of just letting my family down, letting friends down, and just being a failure. And so I had the weight of that on me, the anxiety, the depression. The anxiety was so bad, my entire body was just shaking as I laid there. I couldn't get my body to calm down because I was so anxious. I had so much anxiety. So this went on for hours. I was begging God to just let me die. And I finally realized that he was not going to kill me. He was not going to let that happen. So in realizing that I was going to have to face reality... I had this epiphany that if I didn't want to live for me, then if God would have me, I would live for him. And I was like, that's it. I don't want to live for me. So God, if you will have me, I will spend the rest of my life learning about you, just seeking you. I was like, I don't even know you. Like, I don't understand you. But if you'll have me, I want to know you. And... It was like, whew, the power and presence of God, the love of God came into the room. And I describe it as like liquid love. It started at my head 
and it just went all the way down my body until I felt like I was wrapped in a blanket of love, like a newborn baby that had just been swaddled and wrapped so tightly. And I was at total peace. I had not felt peace like that before. And I even had joy. Like I started smiling as I laid there on that little cot in the jail cell. The place smelled, you know, I smelled bad. You know, I'm in these horrible conditions, but the love of God came. He came for me and I knew it was Jesus. And I just immediately had this knowing of how much love he had for me. And I could just hear him like in my spirit. He was just saying over and over again, I've got you now. I've got you now. You don't have to worry anymore. I've got you now. And I remember thinking, I don't care if anyone ever comes to get me because I have him now. And it doesn't matter what happens when I leave here. It doesn't matter what happens to my career. It doesn't matter what my family thinks. It doesn't matter what my friends think. I am going to live for him. And my life's going to be different. And it has been different ever since. And I know that many of you have probably heard the saying, but my worst day with him is better than my best day without him. And there's a scripture that says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you've never encountered him, if you want to encounter him, if you say, I just, I want to know him. I don't, I don't understand you. I don't know who you are. Just call out to him. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're on the street or if you're at a rehab or you could be a billionaire. It doesn't matter. You, you can be empty no matter what state of life you're in. But just like I called out to him and he came, he is willing, he is ready. He wants to encounter you more than you want to encounter him. So call out to him. He is ready to come to you today. So that is how I met him. That was the best encounter I've ever had in my life. And I've continued to just um, encounter his presence over and over again. But I'm so thankful for that moment that I surrendered to him and met him for the first time. So thank you for, for being along this journey and for listening to this story. Call out to him today. This is Jesus with Josie. You guys be blessed.